as we all know, children in all countries are struggling with the effects of COVID-19. An entire generation of children have had their education severely disrupted. Over a billion young children worldwide. We're meeting today to discuss how to prevent this disruption from becoming permanent for millions of refugee children. If you were a refugee child before the pandemic, you were already twice as likely to be out of school than other children. UNHCR has worked with the Malala Fund to model the possible impact of the virus. And the study found that there is significant risk that half of the girls who are currently enrolled will never go back to school at all. There is one, uh, one particular refugee child who epitomizes this, this risk for me. Her name is Holly. She was nine years old uh, and playing in her garden in Syria when their house was bombed, uh, killing her mother, forcing her and her siblings to flee to Lebanon. By the time she was 11, when I first met her, her days were spent fetching water and searching for fuel and cooking for her family. She stopped going to school, and while she was in her teens, she was married and already has her first child. Millions of refugee children around the world will face these kinds of life-altering pressures as a result of the pandemic and the economic crisis. COVID-19 is proving to be an incredible catalyst for science and discovery and innovation and if we could do the same for education, harnessing new technologies with the power of government and private sector funding and the energy and the drive of millions of talented young people, it would be one of the greatest single inoculations imaginable against poverty and the denial of rights worldwide. And of course, there isn't one solution that fits all settings. On one hand, there are amazing new technologies available to support distance learning. On the other hand, many children don't have access even to TV or radio, let alone a laptop or Wi-Fi. 80% of students in Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, have no access to internet. So there is a very real digital divide within as well as between countries. So we have to consider what technologies work best in individual settings, from text message services to radio, TV, internet, the needs of children with disabilities, the part that hunger plays in damaging children's ability to learn, the role of teachers, and the support they need to keep on going and many, many other issues. So I hope, I hope very much that this coalition can be the start of identifying solutions and models that work. And then that can be scaled up on a global level urgently. To my mind, there's one fundamental question in this because of how the world so often speaks of and, and talks about refugees. Do we allow them to regard refugees as a burden? Or do we help them to see that they are individuals with huge potential, who if given the right tools, can develop their minds, contribute to society, and help stabilize their home countries? So, for me, there's only one answer. There, there is no better investment than we can make. And of course, it is also their basic human right that must not be denied. So thank you, and I look forward to this discussion with all of you.